retro rock plays everything. Hey, Rob here, and today we're going to be talking about a fabulous moment in gaming history. Not really. <laughs> we are going to be talking about Activision's TV Classics plug-and-play device, uh, which was made by a company called Toymax back in 2000. It's an unusual device. Uh, note that it is an Atari 2600-based gaming device. In other words, all the Activision Classics that are on here are the Atari 2600 versions of them. And notice that it has a D-pad, so this is going to be weird right off the bat. By the way, I've only looked at the menu, so uh, all the play is going to be a surprise. I know all the games, though, for the most part, anyway, on it. Okay, so let's take a look at this, shall we? There is uh, the on-off button in this unlikely location. Take a look at that. Turns the power on and off. I can imagine having some problems with that being a uh, regular D-pad player. If, you're th if your finger's on here, you might flex and accidentally turn off the unit. That's kind of annoying. There's also a reset button right here on the right side. Uh, there is a start and a reset button. Those are useful in the menus. And of course, there is the D-pad and the fire button. I believe these will also select difficulties and other, set, other things as well. I'll take a look at that in the menu. But that's what I'd heard about it. Uh, the body is made out of a very solid, well-built plastic. I think it was probably originally built for kids. If you look back here at the back, you can see that uh, these are reinforced, which is a really nice thing. So these, these actually feel very stiff. Uh, they're quite nice. The front buttons are made 100%, like, well, not 100%, but they're, they're rubber. They're actually made out of rubber. So if you look, I can actually flex this thing. I don't know if you can see it, but it actually will flex. And it doesn't hurt it because it's actually rubber, as are these buttons as well. For output, of course, it has two RCA jacks, uh, one for video, one for audio. Of course, there's no stereo audio because this is an Atari 2600 based device and the Atari 2600 did not have stereo. By the way, uh, if you really want to, you could put it in a splitter. Of course, you're still not going to get real stereo sound, but if it annoys you that it's coming out of one speaker, I know some, some TVs still do that. Uh, you can always uh, get a splitter to do that. All right. Uh, the other thing, finally, is that it takes four AA batteries. The other thing also is that uh, it does have 10 games, if I didn't mention that earlier, but there is two versions of this. There's also a joystick version of this, which is a really weird-looking device. In fact, it looks like a homebrew or something. It's really uh, a plain-jane, bizarre-looking device. And I'm going to look more into that and see if we can't get a copy of that one to show you as well. But why don't we get on to playing the games that are on here, since I'm pretty sure you didn't come to see me just hold this thing up. But anyway, here it is. Uh, yeah, very nice, right? It's not bad. <laughs> All right. Let's get into the games. All right, so here we are at the main menu. Uh, it's not really the best main menu ever, is it? Not very exciting. Uh, like those dancing diamonds, that's a lot of work. But this is the 2000s, and it looks a little bit like the early 90s. Let's press on. I'm going to hit the one button to start Crackpots here. Not the best game on the collection either, but a nice place to start. It does have a nice description of how to play each game at the beginning. So that's useful. And let's hit start to start the game. That is the little red button. And it's not too bad. I mean, you know, this game, again, it didn't control well with a joystick, you know? And it doesn't control real well with a D-pad either. That's how it is. Not one of my favorite games on the collection, but it's not a bad game at all. Squish the spiders. It's just like real life. Ooh, I let one go. I'm gonna let two go. Too slow. Like most Atari games, it, it gets steadily faster, but there's usually like a break in the difficulty in between. It'll let you catch up, which uh, this game also has. So. I'm getting walloped here. Like 
The next level is a little bit slower. Well, a little bit easier to deal with than this one here, I'll show you. I think we'll get out of it. I don't think uh, we need 45 minutes of crack pots in this. You see how it's they're going straight now, so that makes it a little bit easier to deal with. You crud. There we go. Alright, easy enough. Let's go back to the main menu, which by the way is this reset button right there. Fortunately, it doesn't spend a whole lot of time on this screen. Let's go on to tennis. It's actually a pretty good game. It's you know it it's tennis. I mean. But it's a fun game of tennis, which you can't always say. Pretty sure that was out of bounds. I'd like a replay on that, please. Oh, I screwed it up again. It's going to kick my butt. Oh, he's too good. Bugger. Come on. There we go. Oh, nice. And I'm done for. Back to the main menu. Well played. Next we have Atlantis, which isn't even by Activision, so I don't really understand what it's doing in this collection. But hey, it's a great game anyway. This one's by Magic. It's the sequel. No, actually, it's the prequel to uh, one of my favorite games, Cosmic Arc. In this one, the controls are a little bit weird. Uh, basically, you press this way and fire to fire the left one. This one, you're, you're pressing right. Pressing in the same direction, and then you're firing. And then if you just leave it, you press the center. It will get harder. I like the graphics in this. They're quite good for Atari 2600 graphics. I actually prefer this version to the Intellivision version. Which is quite a pretty game. I think I got it on the Coleco too. I don't recall. But really good game. I mean, th this is actually a fun game. And considering the going rate for these is like $5, that's worth the price of admission alone. Quite good. Oop, I'll move this up a little bit. Alright, let's go on to Spider Fighter, one of my favorite games of all time. You'd think I'd be better at it. <laughs> but I'm not. Ooh, especially with the D-pad, jeez. Yeah, I feel a slop there. It's probably because I play this game more and I'm used to how it controls that I feel this you know, I can feel the sloppiness of the controller, but it is a little sloppy. It's not bad, though. I'm pretty sure if you're uh, used to playing with a D-pad, if you're like a, a D-pad junkie, this is probably going to work pretty well for you. But I am about to accidentally hit the on-off button. I keep rubbing up against it. That's kind of too bad. Ooh. Where you can make it up, it's Spider Fighter. It's like that. Basically, you, you want to wipe out the pod before it lays, that big pod before it lays too many eggs because the eggs become spiders and the, the spiders are a big pain in the butt. Each level has a different fruit. There's a lot of different fruits. I once Marathon played this game and it was like... Uh, two hours, I think, before I just gave up and quit playing. So, uh, yeah, the difficulty level on this is not terribly high, but it is a great game. I really like it. I like the graphics on it. I like the gameplay. This is a great game. Alright, let's reset. Go on to the next. Oh, Pitfall! 
One of the all-time Activision classic games. Ugh, screwed that up. Wrong pitfall game. Idea here is to avoid stuff. Oh, did I really? Jeez. I did it again. Yeah, it's a little. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit off. It's it, it's throwing me off with the uh, D-pad. It, it's not a hundred percent here. It might be the fact that uh, that I just suck. It could be that too. Anyway, pitfall. I'd like to have at least captured something on there, but we'll go on. Ice hockey was another game I played quite a bit when I was a kid. And it's uh, quite a good game. Oh, come on, dude. Slow there. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> That's annoying. There. Oh, come on. I'm pretty sure you were able to knock out the guy. There we go. For God's sake, put it in. There we go. Not an embarrassing shutout like Pitball was. Got him. Oh no you don't. Oh. Having a terrible time intercepting it. I don't remember how to do this, I think. He won't pick it up! He will not pick up the dang ball. I mean the puck. The other guy gets it every time. I don't get that. I'm pretty sure you just have to walk up to it. Yeah. Look at that. I'm trying to wipe out the other player, but it's just not working. Terrible. I just passed it to him. Nice. Yeah, I just cannot seem to whack the guy. <laughs> oh, come on. Ridiculous. See there, I was able to do it. I don't know. Enough of that. Rage quit. <laughs> Rage quit on the Atari. Grand Prix. Another game I played quite a bit of. Start. Kind of funny, this kind of game has become popular again. With the uh, advent of uh, portable gaming, or the you know, coming of age of things on cell phones, games on cell phones, you just see this kind of game all the time. Oh, oops. Great sound effects. <laughs> Terrible. Basically just a race to the finish line. Come on. There we go. Very exciting, I know. Probably not 
the best game to add to the collection, but not bad. I mean, where's Enduro? Enduro was a great game. Boxing. I like this game. Start. Oh, he's pounding the crap out of me. I'm on the ropes. Rhythm you can get into, and if you get it, it'll punch the crap out of them. Ah, come on. No. Hit him. Ah, come on. Oh, there we go. He's just pulling right ahead of me. It's by a little. Come on. <sighs> Not scored a punch on him in a while now. Get him, get him, get him! Ah. tie what do you know i was looking for a victory but i got a tie all right reset great two-player game great two-player game river raid another classic Feels a little sticky with the uh, gamepad. I was amazed by this game when I first played it. <sighs> Hitting those fuel barrels, Benson, that's a good idea. that fuel up. Oh no, that's bad. Poorly played, poorly played. But what do you expect? Me playing it. Alright, let's keep going. Finally, we've got Freeway, which is a Frogger clone. Dang it. It is not my belief that this game improves in any way on Frogger. Notice how I'm not moving left or right. Because I can't.
Go! Go! Run, little chicken. I used to have chickens, and they did used to play this game in real life. Sometimes they won, sometimes they lost. I had a lot of friends who were really into this game, I just don't... <laughs> it does nothing for me. I realize it's a classic, so don't be hating, but, eh, it's just not... To me, it's just not... ...as great as Frogger was, at all. Alright, let's back out of that one and get back to the main menu, and, uh... I'll ...let you know what I think of this thing. Uh, <laughs> alright. It does have some really good games on it. Obviously, the highlights for me are Spider Fighter, Atlantis, Pitfall, uh, Boxing, which I love. I just love that game, and River Raid. So, yeah. but when you look at that, that's about what 50% of the system. And even in 2000, they could have easily packed 20, 30, maybe even more games. I realized they wanted to sell like the blue edition of this and, and another edition, but. It would have been nice if they could have added a few more games, so it's not really my favorite. The other thing about it is that it's only single player, and a lot of these games really benefit from multiplayer, especially uh, especially boxing, which is really just a an A plus kind of uh, of multiplayer game. I really love that game. It's too bad they didn't do multiplayer. The the controls really aren't that bad. They were pretty responsive. I thought they worked fine. Again, you know, they're nothing like the original, which I think is kind of weird. But later on, they did make these things with a, a more original controller, so it's not that bad. So all in all, I'm going to give it a reluctant thumbs up. <laughs> My hand's off of the, uh, out of the screen there. A reluctant thumbs up, but I am going to say don't pay more than like 5 to $7 for these things. And that is like the going rate. You'll see them on eBay for that. You'll see them in thrift stores. I think I paid like $3 for this thing, and it's fine for that. You know, given the construction quality and the fact that it's kind of a neat little neat little handheld to have. Um, it, you know, again, there's better collections available, though. You've got the Atari Flashback for $30. Well, you know, what are you going to go with? I would say the Flashback. All right. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Bye. Retro Rocks Gaming Videos